Hey guys, it's Jonathan with Southern Drone Ops. Today we're going to answer some questions with a little friend. This is Hamilton. This is our new little pygmy pig that we're going to have uh, around the house and around the business and in the videos. You guys see Rose all the time and now you're going to start seeing Hamilton, hopefully. So um, he can't decide if he's warm or cold, so I may cover him up or uncover him as we go. Um, if you've never had pigs, apparently you have to hold them where all their uh, limbs or their feet are under you and they feel like they're not going to fall and they like their little nose to be able to like, I don't know, m like muzzle or nuzzle into my hand or whatever. Anyway, I'm going to be answering questions today. So question number one is from Safety Guy. Uh, he was commenting on a video uh, where we were working with SSI and Rick and his team putting the sensor on the drone. He said, why not just go with the sniffer for D? So this would be a much better question for Rick because that's going to go much deeper into the technology differences between the sniffer 4D and the sensor that we use. I can tell you purely from a cost perspective, um, they're different um, vastly. I mean, um, the sensor we have is going to be much bigger and it's going to be more costly. However, the capabilities of it are not, I looked, I think I saw the Sniffer 40 can cover like eight to nine chemicals at a time, but it was more so for like gas and oil industries. It wasn't for a wider, like a real wide array of chemicals or particulates like our sensor was. Like ours was like up to 80 different particulates at a time. That's just the particulates in the air. That doesn't count what it's collecting ground data wise because uh, it does have lasers it shoots off of it and what information it pulls from the ground. So that one is a much, much bigger, more significant payload that's going to give us and the uh, person on the ground, the uh, disaster coordinator, much more data to work with. So the Sniffer 4D would be great and it's been, obviously it's already been out and being used and it's phenomenal. However, just like everything else, things evolve, they get better and this is uh, not even evolution. I mean, this is just a completely different offering of a sensor and what it's able to do is, is mind blowing. So I'm very happy that we're able to offer that. And I think we I know we have another test coming up or a last test coming up soon with it. And then we're going to be putting it, uh, hopefully, uh, the nation's capital this fall. We'll see. So next question, uh, there's a couple questions. Uh, surrounding this topic. We got one from Craig and one from Colton. They were asking um, about the trailers that they've been seeing on social media that we offer. They want to know some prices and just some info about those trailers. Yeah, so as far as the trailers, we didn't plan to make trailers, honestly. Part of our consulting was always we would help you create your trailer because we've had so many iterations of them over the years and we've had so much time in the field. So we've kind of figured out what works, what doesn't work, you know, what's better in this situation, what's better in that situation. And I've had a lot of failures over the years on, on certain things on trailers. So I kind of took that knowledge and used in my consulting to help people build their own ones. So I would usually say you need a trailer this long that holds this much weight, these types of axles or these types of features on it. But I had someone say, well, can you, know, can you build a trailer? Just do a turnkey and bring it to me. And at that time, I had just had a client that used a local uh, trailer manufacturer and we collaborated on it. I put the idea to that manufacturer owner and he said, yeah, sure. So we actually uh, started uh, using them to create the trailers and they've been really good. The quality on them are phenomenal. I think everything that I, the small touches here and there on them um, is what really makes the difference for them from being you know, just a salesman that's selling a drone or a trailer to an operator that was in the field that then created a trailer to say, hey, this is what works best. This is what saves us time. This is what, this is what makes our setup and breakdown time minimal. This is what makes us safe. This is what makes us efficient. As far as the pricing on it, there are different loadouts. They start around 30,000, and then depending on generator, types of you know, hosing, uh, size of your tank, stuff like that, they can go up to there to 32, 33. So they're, you know, like I said, they start out low 30s, uh, but they're fully functional and they're expandable up to three drones. So when you start out with one, it's not going to just 
that's it. You have to get another trailer. You can expand it out and do more. And that's kind of how I designed it. And there's a lot of really neat safety features in it as well. But it's able to have three uh, drones eventually. Start out with one, and then you're able to, you know, expand out to the three safety features. Like I keep talking about the three layers of security that people seem to forget about a lot. And like I said, I don't think that's a requirement or a rule anymore, but for me personally, it's something, it's it's a creed that I follow because I think it's, it's, it's what we, it's our responsibility to make sure these drones are kept and protected and not used for, you know, any harm. Going on to the next question, uh... There's been a couple of people commenting this, but these uh, we're going to pick these two comments. One from Luke, no, one from Bo, and one from Maddox. Uh, they made their comment about just putting someone out else out of a job, uh, just putting someone else out of a job. I mean, they're useful for some things. Uh, so maybe talk about that a little bit and how we don't take jobs. Yeah, we've had people ask questions or, or make comments about the drones taking jobs. Uh, guys in the agriculture, I mean, in anywhere, any industry, there's not enough workers anywhere. Um, I can't think of any industry where they're like, hey, we just got too many workers. We got people just, you know, sitting around looking for jobs because, you know, there's just, you know, too, too many in this field. We're, every industry is short. Uh, agriculture, especially, I think having to work outside and having those extreme conditions to work in, uh, I don't think that it, that attracts as many, uh, the extreme conditions don't attract as many as, say, uh, an air conditioner job would so these drones are not taking jobs from anybody if anything they're filling jobs that were empty or they're filling jobs that were never there before and now you've got the option to spray these areas a lot of the land we spray now has never been sprayed by air it's only been sprayed by ground a lot of these areas are so dangerous and difficult to get to that these drones flying over and spraying them now is the first time those have been sprayed from air. So we're definitely not taking jobs from people. Uh, we are definitely making farms more proficient. We're helping them create more food. Um, we're helping them you know, have more ability to grow more and yield more and provide more food for everyone. So I think that's a great thing. All right, next question from user three four seven eight five five and other people. They they're asking uh, the cost of these drones. So the cost of the drones vary. Um, the newest one out, the operator package that I call it, comes with what I think you need to work in the field. Uh, that's a certain amount of batteries, chargers, extra batteries, extra cables, things like that. You're looking around thirty one thousand or so. Um, that's the newest one out. There is, that's the T-50. And then the other one, the T-25, I think is probably around 20 or so full package. And that's where it can be a little deceiving because sometimes with the picture or with the uh, people put pricing out, they may just price the drone itself, but you also need your batteries, your charger, your accessory batteries, your accessory cables, you need your dry spreader. There's all kinds of things you need, plus your licensing, your insurance. So there's. There's all kinds of things. Um, so price-wise of the drones, I would say you should look at you know 30-ish or so starting out uh, for a full one drone, uh, full-size package. It's for the spray drones, for the scan or remote sensing drones, you're looking at about 5,000. Um, there is the used market for that. Um, do whatever you need to with it. I like having the new products with the warranties and uh, knowing that I'm not getting a drone that you can dress up for a little bit, but after so long, a problem will eventually surface that you know you can hide for so long. From Megan, Wayne, and Josh, uh, they were asking, one, about the drone controller cover. They were confusing it with a second screen, um, as well as the strap that holds the controller. They're asking uh, where they can find it, and uh its use case yes so i'm gonna try to move my arm and not let hamilton squeal at me that this is the screen cover it's not a second screen it is off amazon it is just an agris uh controller uh cover it's like 17 bucks i think uh, you can get a strap that comes with it. The actual ones I carry are the ones that come with the controllers themselves. I call them a bra because they kind of kind of put them on like a bra. Don't ask me how I know that. But anyway, you put them on, you just kind of put them on. And then these little things here on the bottom snap out. And then it clicks into it. And that's what I use it. I use it because I always have the drone right up my chest level. 
Um, even though these drones do automate and they do fly and they do everything mostly by themselves, I don't trust them. And if they go to miss something or something goes wrong, software messes up, pattern, uh, I want to be able to stop the operation immediately. And if I set my controller down or I have it somewhere else, I'm not a good, you know, complete, I'm not a good pilot and I'm not able to stop, you know, something that could, you know, go disastrously wrong. Eric, they were asking how much do you charge an acre and how do you come up with your pricing? Ooh, guys, spraying and charging and costing acreage is hard. That is the hardest question in our industry to answer. Everywhere is different. I've got the best applicators in California and New York that I talk to. They won't get their drone out of their truck for less than $20 an acre. Um, in my area, I see an average of probably 12 to 15 an acre, depending on rate. Uh, if you go to the higher rates for like fungicides and things like that, um, you're looking at about 20 or so. Um, there's equations and there's all kinds of things like you can have show fees, where if it takes me an hour to get there, I'm gonna charge 250 or 350 just to show, and then we're gonna charge so much per acre. So that's a very, very hard one to answer, and there's not a market now. The market is whatever we, we say it is try to be fair, we try to look at other people and, and you know other options that they have and what they're able to do. Um, and then we have to always look and see you know, with us. It's like, you know, hey, I'm already covered up, I'm already slammed, I, I can squeeze you in here, but it's gonna be this much because otherwise I may burn myself out. So if I'm gonna burn out for that day, I need to make this much money so I can recover for the next day with it. So that's very, that, that's pricing per acre is very variable. Phil, um, he was asking about the Pineapple Express, uh, the work truck. He's asking, what weather station are we using on it? I looked it up. Hold on. It's a, I think it's called a Pine Logic. Sane Logic. It's the weather station is a Sane Logic. S A I N L O G I C. And I got that off of Amazon. I think it's like 400 bucks. It's really accurate. I like the screen on it. It's really good. We use uh, Ian Drone Logbook. We use the Metar report that we pull, but I like having the ground station from Zach Lawson. Um, he was commenting on a video where you were talking uh, to a high school class about the drones and their benefits of using a drone. Uh, you mentioned less chemicals, less water. Um, I think he just misunderstood what you meant by that, but he said less chemicals, less water. So you're saying you're not following the label on the chemicals you're applying. No, we always follow the label. There's a saying in the application world, the, the label is a law. So we follow it. If some, some chemicals are not indicated for aerial use, we can't use them. So if there's not an indication for that on the label, we can't use them. And then also on the label, it's gonna have a minimum application standard of two gallons, five gallons, 10 gallons, whichever, and we're gonna follow that. So what I meant when I said we use less water, less chemical, uh, that more so applies to like when we're doing spot spraying or we are able to identify the weeds in the field and just go and spray those weeds um, because like um, there's a, a chemical called permit and permit is 17 ounces, I'm sorry, uh, $17 an ounce. And so when we're looking at um, using two to three ounces an acre maybe, and we don't have to, you know, so I, an example I can use of that exact one is we had six acres of rice and instead of spraying the six acres of rice, which would have been, you know, three ounces times 17 times six, whatever the you math guys say that is, is what it would have cost. Instead, when we scanned and found just the weeds, we only sprayed 1.2 acres. So instead of that, so pretty much that's one sixth of the cost. I, I can't do that quickly. So that's where we save on chemical and saved on water and things like that is because we use less water and less chemical put out. But no, we're not modifying the chemicals we're putting out. We're following them, what can be done. And there's sometimes, that's the two questions I immediately ask when someone calls me wanting, wanting me to spray is, what am I putting out um, and where's it at? Um, that's the first, that's the things I have to check first. Uh, because if I can't put it out, no point in us even talking. And then if I can't get to it, or if I if it's too far away or something like that, there's no point in going any further. So, but no, we're not we're not modifying the chemicals. The label is the law, and we go by it always. Well, guys, this has been Jonathan with Southern Drone Ops and Hamilton, who has not made one sound this entire time. I hopefully got us a good little pig. So um, I say it, take it back. I think there was one squeal at the beginning. 
But uh, we have answered several questions today. Uh, we love when you guys ask questions. You can reply or send you know, direct messages, and we will do our best to answer all those. We understand this is a new industry, and this is something that we are trying to get as much information out as possible. This is our new kind of media room that we're going to be in. We're going to have several people come in for podcast and education and content. So uh, be watching out for that. And I know here in a little bit we're going to swap out, bring a new crew person on, and have some more content for you guys. Thank you.